Hello, I'm Lauren, that awkward plant girl. Welcome back to my channel. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you guys for popping in. Today, I want to talk about philodendron Burley Marks Care. I have had this plant since a little bit before Christmas time, but I've done just about everything possible to it. I've grown it in three different conditions. I have chopped it up. We have survived a lot of issues together, um, including toddlers. My toddler has absolutely loved this plant, and this plant is still thriving. So I've got actually four different plants to show you today and just kind of go over what I'm doing with each different one. The overall basic care has remained the same for all of them throughout that. So I just kind of wanted to go over that for you. I know generally if I have a plant for less than a year, unless I have a whole bunch of them, I generally don't like to give out care guides. For this particular plant, it is typical philodendron behavior. It is typical philodendron care. You can take a lot of what I'm going to talk about today and apply it to pretty much any philodendron out there for the most part. Part. Um, there are some that are going to be more finicky than others, of course, but this is for the very common ones, the very easy care ones. So you can kind of take this and apply it to those. Um, so let's get into it. The first one I want to talk about over here is in my greenhouse. It's in my greenhouse 24-7. It has a very high humidity environment. As you can see, it's not getting very much light, so the leaves are staying quite small. They're not maturing. I don't have it on anything that is going to make it go climb up and it is climbing up naturally all on its own. I will need to put it on a pole or a board here shortly just because it's getting so tall that I'm worried that it may not continue to uh, size up its leaves. So I definitely want to get a pole on there for that. But overall, the leaves are very thin, they're very glossy, and there is a lot of them. It is definitely overproducing in this high humidity environment. So definitely wanted to take note of that. Also, I let this plant dry out completely. I water this plant maybe once a month in this high humidity environment. It has not lost a leaf yet. It is a very, very happy plant. Definitely, if you are going away for something, um, if you're leaving your plants on vacation and you're worried that your plant is not going to make it, if you're leaving it out in your open environment, it, shove it in the greenhouse it's going to be fine I guarantee you it will have new leaves even without you watering it when you come back the other one that I wanted to talk about is over here on my little plants on board system I do not have it on a board it did not want to attach to the board so I just scooted it away it actually lost a leaf when I tried to press it up against a board it just was not happy with that um so so I learned my lesson and I left it alone as far as that goes and I pulled it back. Um, I do have this little propagation here because my children were playing and somehow totally decapitated this plant. It was much taller with lots of continued growth and this is the growth point from that plant. Since this plant got chopped, it just now put out this new leaf, but it took it a month to regrow that new leaf and it started growing from the base again instead of continuing on from the top. It has multiple new growth points, which is fantastic, um, but it was definitely concerning that it took so long to recover after a chop. And I think part of the reason of that is my room is sitting at 40% humidity right now. And I think it needed a little bit more humidity and a little bit more watering and attention in order to produce that new growth faster. When it is producing multiple growth points, I have noticed that it needs a lot more water. Um, I have not been able to overwater this plant and I have not been able to underwater this plant. I have left it alone for a month at a time and then I have had my toddler water this plant daily. It is in soil and sphagnum mix combination in a terracotta pot. Um, we watered it in the wintertime daily. We've watered it here in the summertime daily. There has been no issues. It seems to be able to take whatever you could possibly throw at it. So if you're just getting into philodendron, this is a very, very easy beginner one. Very inexpensive. Grows grows fairly quickly and it can get very big. So it's like a win, win, win. And if you don't have this plant, you need it. There is no reason to not because it's amazing. <laughs> By far one of my favorite philodendron for ease of care. Um, and I do want to talk about the third one. I did save it for last. As you can see, it has a lot of beautiful growth points on it. Um, it also has a lot of random sticks. <laughs> And the reason for that is my toddler decides to chop it about once a month. So he has his little kitty scissors and he will come and he will help me when I'm pruning plants and whatnot. Generally, I will give him a plant that he can go and chop all by himself. He's two and a half. Um, 
and he really likes to help me. So I will have a particular plant with a lot of dead leaves and I'm teaching him to go ahead and chop off those dead leaves. It's like a spider plant or something. Um, but one day he decided to take his little paper cutting scissors and go at it with this poor philodendron. He's actually done it twice now. So that is where all of this is coming from. But it has given me an insight into how this plant grows when just the foliage is chopped. And I have noticed that every time the foliage is chopped, it doubles, sometimes even triples the output of its leaves. And this particular one over here sitting in a lower light with a little bit of a higher humidity, um, I have this bucket next to it that's always got water in it and this Monstera is always getting watered. So the humidity is actually about 10% higher over here than anywhere else in my plant room just because of the bucket that I have here. Um, and that seems to help this plant recover from a chop a lot faster. So am I sad that my toddler keeps chopping my plant? Absolutely. Am I kind of excited that this has led to uh, a little bit of a discovery on how to help this plant recover from chops? Yes, yes I am. Um, <laughs> so but as you can see, it's got a lot of new growth on it. The new growth comes in a very pale green and then it hardens off to a beautiful dark green color. You may have noticed that it has these beautiful lobes and this beautiful arrow shape um, on the more mature leaves and it just becomes more prominent as it gets older and more mature and climbs up more. So it's a very, very fun plant, very cool and it never ever stops growing. It always has growth points going on somewhere even when it's sad. Um, this plant is just growing in just sphagnum moss over here, which is probably another reason why the humidity is higher now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but I let it dry out completely. I let it until I can stick my finger in it and there is no moisture in there whatsoever. And then I will water this one. And that's how this one has been growing. But very, very easy care. I'm very excited for it. If you don't have one, you definitely need one. They are very inexpensive now. Um, I can also chop up some of mine. Just go ahead. Um, you can join the foliage scene, our Discord, and it's completely and totally free. I'll link an invite down below just hit me up or you can message me on Instagram I'm happy to chop up mine and send you some because I clearly have a whole bunch um, <laughs> but it's a very very exciting plant that's a must-have for everyone so definitely definitely give it a shot oh another thing that I wanted to mention about this plant is I ordered this plant um, I ordered all of these plants as one giant plant um, back in November I believe it was and it did not like shipping. It did not like shipping at all. It got here, it was incredibly dry, and then I didn't wanna water it right away, so I waited a couple days, then gave it water. It went into complete shock, dropped almost all its foliage. The whole thing started to have a bunch of issues, so I chopped it up, I turned it into these three plants, and that's why we have these three plants. Um, so it does not like shipping. It will struggle when it is shipped. So just keep that in mind. Um, and if you are going to be sending it, send multiple nodes. I have recently just put a node from this plant in my terrarium. So make sure you subscribe for updates to see how it grows in a terrarium environment as well. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight. It doesn't need a lot of light. It doesn't need a lot of water. It doesn't need a lot of attention. It's essentially the spider plant version of a philodendron. So you get the beautiful looks of a philodendron with the care of a spider plant. You just, you don't have to do anything. It's amazing. I'm gonna let you go. I've got another terrarium maintenance video coming out later this week for you. Definitely subscribe. I'm gonna try to upload some shorts for you. Um, check out our Discord. I'd love to chat with you. We're always making plenty friends on there. We've got some lots of great people. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.